So today we're going to talk about graphing um, and all of the different types of graphs that you'll be required to make in physics and also the parts of the graph. So we call it Graphing 101. First thing we're going to talk about is a tabulation data table. It's when you're doing a survey or getting general information and you're just making hash marks and keeping track. So there's uh, four important parts for a tabulation data table. The first one is a descriptive title. The title has to be descriptive, has to relate to what it is you're doing, and it needs to be underlined. Second is column headings. Each of your columns need to have a heading so we know what the information underneath is all about. Third, a visible boundary. I need to see a box around it. And finally, appropriate data. So here we have an example uh, where we flipped pennies. You have heads and tails. Those are my column headings. Penny flip is my descriptive title. And there's my data and my visible boundary. So that's what's required for a tabula da da tabulation data table. We also have pie graphs. Pie graphs are um, circle graphs, obviously. They look like a pie. And they have four specific pieces that we need to see when you're, whenever you're writing a pie graph. First is a descriptive title. Second, the circle, and it's divided into percentage pieces. I'll show you an example in just a minute. Third, identify data as pie pieces. So your data needs to be identified, needs to be pie pieces. And finally, a key so that we know what's what. And in this example, you can see that we did a uh, survey about preferred snack, and we only gave two choices, ice cream or cookies. 10% of the people chose cookies, and 90% of the people chose ice cream. Here we have our key, and here we have our pie graph. Next, we have complete data tables, and that's the last time you're going to hear me say complete data tables, because from now on, all of your data tables will be complete. They contain a number, of, um, a number of pieces, so let's go through them. First, as always, a descriptive title. You're going to get tired of hearing that, but it's really important that at the top of your data table, you tell me what the title is, what it, what it is you're talking about in your graph. Independent variable, that's the thing that you change or the thing that changes. Frequently, it's time, unless you're measuring time with a stopwatch, but but generally, if you're taking readings over time, time is your independent variable. There are other things that could be your independent variable as well. If you're struggling with independent variable, please watch the video on variables. Dependent variable is what you actually measure. Then we need units for both the independent and the dependent variable. So if you say three, I don't know three what, unless you tell me it's three minutes, or three pieces of pie, or three students. Otherwise, I'm not sure what that three stands for and that the units need to be in parentheses. Uh, you need to have your data collected and it needs to be presented in ordered pairs. So, for instance, for our example, we took the temperature at Santan over the course of eight hours. But let's say we forgot to go out at four o'clock and take a reading and we had no temperature. That four o'clock data point would simply go away because it was no longer a pair. And finally, as always, we need visible boundaries and again, please use your rulers. I like straight lines. I want things to look neat in your, in your science notebooks. So here's an example of a complete data table. The descriptive title, the column headings that tell you the independent and the dependent variable, along with the units. There's your data in ordered pairs and a visible boundary. Next, we have bar graphs. Bar graphs are simply pictograms without the pictures. They have a variety of components as well. The vertical line near the left side of your paper, that's this one. Horizontal line near the bottom of your paper, that's this one. Always a descriptive title. I, I really don't even think we need to say that anymore, and it should be underlined. Your independent variable on the horizontal axis. So in this case, we did favorite food, and we gave a choice between pizza, cookies, and fruit. So those were our three choices. That was our ind independent variable. Our dependent variable on the vertical axis, so in this case it was number of people. Our units for independent variable and dependent variable, well, if I say number of people, we don't have any units associated with that. But if we did have units associated with that, it would be in parentheses after the description. Data has to be in ordered pair format. If you're doing um, things like pizza and three people, that's considered an ordered pair. You don't always have to have two numbers to have a, an ordered pair. And finally, the data has to be in a data table somewhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the same page, but you need to have access to it, and so do I. A 
let's go over all the different parts of a graph so that we're all speaking the same language. First of all, we're not going to call them lines anymore. They're axes or axes. The horizontal axis is this way. That's horizontal. Vertical goes this way. Uh, in math, you call this the x. And this the y. You can also do that in science. That's fine. There are two kinds of variables that we're going to focus on. One is the independent variable. It's the treatment or what you change. And again, sometimes that's time. Sometimes it's not, but sometimes that's time. And the dependent variable is what you measure. So if I'm testing whether a certain product will increase the, um, will, the health of my tomato plants, and I'm actually measuring the height of the tomato plants, that would be my dependent variable. Again, units are in parentheses. Numerical increments. So once you know that your range is from 0 to 10, you have to find a way to break that scale up, to break that horizontal or vertical axis up into 10 even parts. Order pairs. So data collected must be in a table. And again, like we used the example before, if you didn't go out four hours after you started your experiment to figure out the temperature, then you're not going to use that. That's not you. Just take and draw a single line through it or an X, but clear enough that I can see underneath and see what you had there. There should be data points, which are um, lots of ordered pairs. And finally, bars and lines. After you're graphing, if you're making a bar graph, after you plot those points, you connect them in a bar or you connect the dots in a line. Now, we don't always connect dot to dot in a line. In fact, we frequently do not connect dot to dot. We put in what's called a line of best fit. But if you're doing a line graph, it's connected with a line. A bar graph is connected with a bar. We have two kinds of graphs that we're going to be focusing on in physics this year. One is a single variable graph. It measures one dependent variable, one dependent variable. And that's going to only have one line. So if you have position time, and that's all you're measuring, you're only going to have one line on that. Sometimes we're going to have multiple variables on our graph, which means our, um, we're going to measure several dependent variables at the same time. Our data table is going to be extra wide or extra long, depending on if we write it horizontally or vertically. So we're going to have more rows or more columns. And you're going to have several, at least two lines on each graph. So each graph is going to have two or more lines. That's kind of a signal that you have a multiple variable graph.